Recently, Halsey the singer has revealed that they have been struggling with chronic illnesses and have been diagnosed with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, MCAS, POTS, and Sjogren's. Halsey has also come out and said that they are still looking into the root cause of some of these illnesses with their doctors. As a patient who has been disabled, basically mostly house and bed bound for three years by some of the same conditions that Halsey is dealing with, I would like to make an argument that I might know some of those root causes. Maybe. Hi fellow health seeking humans, if you're new to my channel, my name is Jake. And I know I look really, really young, but I'm actually a whole year older than Halsey, almost to the day. Before I get into describing what I believe the root cause could be, I want to extremely briefly describe what each of those four illnesses are. So let's start with MCAS, which stands for Mast Cell Activation Syndrome, which I have as well. Don't activate me. You don't want to see me activated. That reference is from Bravo Summer House. Congratulations if you didn't know that reference. That means that you watch less trash TV than I do. In mast cell activation syndrome, mast cells, which are immune cells, are overactive. They're activated and they respond to non-threatening stimuli by releasing mediators that can cause allergic type symptoms, including hives and non-allergic type symptoms like diarrhea. And some people with MCAS, when they have a reaction, they can go into anaphylaxis or anaphylactic shock, which can be life-threatening. So now let's talk about POTS. That stands for Postural Orthostatic Tachycardia Syndrome. And I know that sounds really freaking confusing, so I'll just break it down really quickly. Postural refers to your posture. Orthostatic means standing up. Tachycardia means your heart is beating too fast. And syndrome, I hope to hell you know what that means. So in people without POTS, it's normal for one's heart to be a little harder and faster when one goes from a sitting or laying down position to a standing position because gravity. Hashtag physics. So according to the Mayo Clinic in postural tachycardia syndrome, the nerves that regulate blood flow are out of balance. So enough blood doesn't go to the right place at the right time. So in people with POTS, when they stand up, because of that blood flow imbalance, the heart starts to beat really fast to compensate and people with POTS can get dizzy and lightheaded and sometimes even faint. EDS stands for Ehlers or Ehlers, you hear it both ways, Danlos syndrome, and it is a group of inherited disorders that affects connective tissue. You actually often see what's called the trifecta of EDS, MCAS, and POTS. They go together often in patients. There are many different types of EDS and they have all been found to have a genetic mutation or component to it, except for the hypermobile kind. In the hypermobile kind, patients will be able to hyperextend their joints uh, like their elbows or their knees. In Sjogren's, which is an autoimmune disease, patients' immune cells attack their own healthy tissues that produce saliva and tears, so symptoms include dry mouth and dry eyes. So now let's talk about the illness that I know ties all of these things together, and that is called Bartonellosis. Bartonellosis is a chronic infection that can cause a lot of immune dysregulation, and the infection is by the bacteria Bartonella. Oftentimes you hear Bartonella as being considered a co-infection of Lyme disease, meaning if you have Lyme disease, you also have, can often have an infection with Bartonella. The reason I started this channel is because Bartonella is often under the umbrella of Lyme disease and we know that Bartonella all on its own can cause disabling symptoms in people and extreme immune dysregulation so it needs its own spotlight. Also, Bartonella is a completely different organism than the organism that causes Lyme disease which is Borrelia burgdorferi. One of the main ways that Bartonella causes symptoms is through small vessel disease, referring to small blood vessels, because Bartonella lives in the cells that line the blood vessels. And so there is inflammation in the small blood vessels and the inflammation in the small blood vessels compromises blood flow to certain areas of the body, which can cause almost any symptom, including fatigue, brain fog, even neuropsychiatric symptoms, pain, especially pain in the soles of the feet. And I actually have a whole video explaining how Bartonella causes symptoms, and I'll leave that in the description box below. So how does Bartonella tie into Sjogren's, MCAS, EDS, and POTS? I'm so glad you, just kidding, me, asked myself. 
And before I go any further, I just want to quickly say that I find it extremely, extremely annoying when other people make comments about other people's illnesses and diagnose them or tell them what to do, especially when they don't know a lot about that other person and even more when they don't actually know that person, which is exactly what I'm doing. So I hate myself. But I'm making an excuse for myself because even though I want Halsey to see this video, they probably never will. Regardless of whether I'm right or not that Halsey has Bartonellosis, people with EDS, POTS, MCAS, and or Sjogren's need to know that Bartonella could be at the root of their illness and therefore it can be treated in a more effective way. So let's start with Bartonella and EDS. There is a fantastic case report, I'll put it in the video description box, in which a female veterinarian was diagnosed at Johns Hopkins and, and Harvard with the hypermobile kind of EDS, which is the one that there's no genetic mutation for that's been found, at least not yet. She was experiencing multiple joint dislocations daily and was even scheduled for surgery for the joint problems. So she was seen by a Bartonella literate medical doctor, which is a doctor that knows about Bartonella and how to treat it. And they tested her for Bartonella and they actually found DNA from the organism in her blood on multiple occasions. After going on antibiotic therapy, and Bartonella is treated with antibiotics as well as other things like diet and immune support, etc., etc., her EDS completely resolved. EDS doesn't just go away. So this is a case report in which Bartonella was causing EDS or causing something that looked very similar to EDS. And she went on to have a healthy baby. So the authors of this case report, um, of which I know or I've talked to three out of four of them, they hypothesize that a long-standing Bartonella infection could have activated the mast cells, which could lead to chronic connective tissue damage, which led to those EDS-type symptoms. And so that brings us into mast cell activation syndrome. If you talk to a mainstream doctor, they're not going to know too much about mast cells, and they're going to think of it in a very narrow context of just allergies. But mast cells are there to protect us from infection. Doctors and scientists hypothesize that long-standing infections like Bartonella can cause or at least exacerbate mast cell activation syndrome, especially in people who have genes that make them more likely to develop, to develop mast cell activation syndrome when they encounter certain stressors in the world like Bartonella. So basically the mast cells are detecting an intruder, in this case Bartonella, and then they are freaking out and sending out inflammatory things, trying to kill the Bartonella, trying to kill things like perfume or uh, food, and they're not really being very effective and they're causing a lot of symptoms in the patient in, as collateral damage basically. So now let's talk about how Bartonella is related to POTS and other types of dysautonomia, which refers to dis, dysfunction of the autonomic, auto, meaning like autopilot uh, nervous system. So the part of your nervous system that you don't consciously control like digestion or your pupils dilating. So in Bartonella, that impaired blood flow really affects the nerves. One of my doctors refers to the nerves as sort of very sensitive trip wires. These are the things that are gonna get messed up by this, this change in blood flow first, and those are the symptoms you're gonna feel first. So the Bartonella causes inflammation in the small blood vessels, which impairs blood flow to nerves, and then that includes the autonomic nervous system, and so now you're having dysfunction of the autonomic nervous system, which includes POTS. And I did an interview with a patient that had Bartonellosis and POTS and his mother, and I'll put a link to that in the video description box. In that interview, they describe how uh, Jack had POTS and his resting heart rate was around 145 beats per minute. Now after treatment, all of those symptoms have resolved, including his POTS. And finally, let's talk about Sjogren's and Bartonellosis. The rheumatologist that diagnosed me with Bartonellosis tests all of his Bartonellosis patients, or the ones he suspects may have Bartonellosis, for both Sjogren's and early Sjogren's markers. He sees early Sjogren's markers elevated in a lot of patients who have Bartonellosis. Sjogren's is classified as an autoimmune disease because the immune system is attacking its own healthy tissues. But the forefront of medicine and scientific research is finding that a lot of autoimmune diseases are caused or exacerbated by infections. 
And so with autoimmune diseases, it's been about symptom management, putting patients on steroids, putting them on DMARDs, biologics, so that the body stops attacking itself just because you're suppressing the immune system, but you're not getting to the root cause, which may be microbial in nature. So this doctor also has a webinar, and I'll put the link in the video description box, and he talks about a case report of a 62-year-old woman who had many symptoms, including some joint laxity, which is referring to that hyper extension, as well as mucosal dryness, which is what you see in Sjogren's, and some other fun stuff. So in this patient with Bartonellosis, the sonogram of her submandibular, easy for me to say, glands were suspicious for Sjogren's syndrome. In Sjogren's syndrome, these can be uh, swollen and inflamed. After antimicrobial therapy, in addition to some other therapies, she had a nice resolution of symptoms. So I just want to say that there is a lot of information out there on Bartonellosis that is conflicting or doesn't have a lot of evidence yet, and even some of it is bad, and even some of it comes from people that I respect. And so it's important to remember that when you're in a field that is new and underappreciated like Bartonella and these other syndromes, that the information out there, especially in the beginning, is going to be conflicting and controversial. But the important thing is that these doctors and researchers who are on the forefront of this type of medicine are really trying to get at the root cause and they're succeeding when they are treating patients with Bartonellosis. And so instead of just trying to manage or manage mask these symptoms, these people are returning to a state of health through these Bartonella Lyric medical doctors that they would not have had they just gone down the what's in the medical textbooks. So back to Halsey, Bartonella really does tie all of these things together. And if you think that Bartonellosis could be at play for you, I suggest that you get diagnosed through Galaxy Diagnostics. The team at Galaxy has published prolifically on Bartonella and their testing methods. Do you know who doesn't publish on their testing methods? Both big labs like Quest and LabCorp and other specialty labs like Quack Lab 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. If you know Halsey, maybe you'd like to send them this video. If you know Halsey's hairdresser, maybe you'd like to send them this video. If you know Halsey's hairdresser's cousin, maybe you'd like to send them this video. <laughs> If you're new to Bartonella, I've made a playlist for you right here, and it'll make this uh, video much easier to digest. I know it was hard to digest, but it's also hard to digest when you have Bartonella and MCAS, etc., etc. See you over there, fellow health-seeking humans. Bye! Mwah.